I now call the Norton City Council meeting to order for Monday, April 10th, 2017. The time is 7 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Mrs. Richards, will you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. McLone. Here. Mr. Kernan. Here. Mr. Pearson. Here. Mr. Towsley. Here. Mr. Pelot. Here. And Ms. Whipke. Here. We'll get right on to the Committee of Whole. Are there any reports from the Standing Committee Chairs? Okay, first thing up is acknowledge. Council acknowledges receipt of the March 2017th budget reports. Next item is the casualty and property insurance renewal. Mr. Pearson. Uh, yes, it came to my attention that we're less than 30 days out, so we need to move this to the uh, agenda for its due on the 28th. So I'd like to move this to the regular meeting tonight so we can do at least, at least the first reading and follow-up. Okay. Um, is that all you wanted to do with it for now? Let's, I like to move it to tonight's agenda because we're, renewal is the 28th of April. I'll second that. So, Carla, call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. And Ms. Whitkey? Yes. Next item is a budget appropriation for Cleveland Maslin Road widening. Um, we need to put this on for a first reading for tonight. <coughs> We're also going to be looking to waive the second and third readings later. And with ER language, this is due to us appropriating the ACME property, so we need to move as soon as we can. We will have to put the money up front, but after that, 90% of it will be coming back. I believe it was 216000 The total appropriation fair market value is one eight six. 190 we're getting. Right, we'll get 90% back. back. So we'll be paying about $18,630. Unless the court does something different, but that's where we're at right now, fair market value. Okay, at this time, my motion to add Ordinance 4527 to tonight's agenda. I'll oh, second. Roll call, please. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. And Mr. Towsley? Yes. Communications from the public. I don't have a sheet. Mr. Curran, I think, I don't know if anybody else was on there. Mr. Dan Curran. 4545 uh, Easton Road, Norton. I'm just here to comment on the upcoming decisions you're going to make on the medical marijuana dispensary. Just kind of organize some thoughts about it since this has come up in the Ohio Pharmacists Association and also the Summit County Board of Health. Is, is this mic on? on? It is. Okay. Am I not projecting? No. Could you not speak up well. maybe just, just a little, little bit more? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the DEA classes uh, marijuana as a Schedule One controlled substance. This means that they could go into any state and shut down the dispensary at any time and be fully within their rights. It has not been shown to have any superior medical value over existing medications. Further, it has a high abuse potential. We, as the rest of the county, state, and country, are bemoaning the opiate death rates and can't seem to get a method of combating the abuse. No one starts using a drug with the singular intention of becoming hopelessly addicted. Our society's casual attitude towards recreational drugs has led us to this point. So it would be further irresponsible to endorse the dispensing of this hallucinogen, which is an entry-level drug for other drugs of greater potential hazard. The pharmacist dispensing the drugs could potentially lose his or her license if the DEA did decide to enforce this law, realizing that the laws relaxed under Obama. He's not in. We have Trump. A whole different ballgame. We're waiting to see what happens. 
There are three agencies in our state that are tasked with determining how the distribution will take place. These are the Ohio State Board of Pharmacy, the Ohio Medical Board, and the Ohio Department of Commerce. And they have guidelines that have been given by the uh, governor, and they're tasked with doing this. So they're just taking com – they took comments up until July 15th, and we're waiting to hear some final version of this when they really come out. The Summit County Board of Health voted last year to oppose the use and distribution of medical marijuana. It is this – there is more evidence of recreation and profit luring potential patients, businesses to pr promote this industry. So more than medical fact, uh, it's more the lure of quick cash for somebody with a cash crop and uh, just the possibility that one day it will become a recreational uh, freedom. Uh, I think that also would be a has uh, sad mistake. There are many hazards to other residents that Colorado is having to deal with by law enforcement. Traffic incidents have risen uh, dramatically. Our own county has three trained task force deputies in the sheriff's department. I spoke at length to one of those who was the guard at the Board of Health uh, for our meeting, and he was describing what the current state of uh, Summit County and the rest of the, of the state really is. Um, we knew about the <laughs> – what we knew about the marijuana from the 1960s and 1970s could be termed casual. That was uh, an amount of THC in the 1960s and 70s was about 3 to 4 percent uh, content. It's now about 12 percent. So it's like 3 to 4 times more potent than it once was. <coughs> Now, I'm assuming that what would be regulated and coming out would be somehow standardized and then there would be a dosing that would be equivalent. But still, it's still not been shown to be uh, – and have an advantage, a clear advantage over existing medications. Uh, and just to add, uh, that deputy did say that about a month ago in Summit County there was one found, a source found that was 70 percent THC. That, by the way, is potent enough to cause death, and there is no reversal drug for it like there is for heroin and other opiates. It's a very dangerous uh, turn of events. And we call it marijuana, thinking, oh, back in the 1960s, everybody did that. Well, people can now die from this. So it's not exactly the recreation I think they're getting into. I would encourage you to let them locate somewhere else if they have to exist. I don't believe we should endorse this type of drug or industry by allowing a dispensary to locate in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Going on with considerations of the minutes. First thing up, March 27th, regular council meeting. Are there any additions or corrections? I have none. Minutes are approved as submitted. Minutes of April 3rd, 2017, committee work session. Are there any additions or corrections? I had none. Minutes are approved as submitted. <clears throat> Reports from officers, boards, and commissions. Mayor Zita. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, at this time, I will uh, decline until <clears throat> later on in the meeting and do public service announcements. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Carr. Um, actually, I have Chief D'Alessandro here who's going to talk about two um, things that the police department have been working on. One is the Ohio Collaborative Certification and also a heroin and drug awareness event that will be coming up. And then um, when he's finished, I just wanted to give you a quick update on Shell Hart Cleveland Maslin Road drainage that was talked about last week. So with that, Chief. Good evening. And I'll, are you doing the collaborative first? Yeah, I'll do the – yeah. Did everybody get the memo? I'm passing it out right okay. now. Okay. Back in um, 2015, uh, Governor Kasich signed an executive order establishing statewide minimum standards for all local and, and state police departments. Uh, these statewide minimum standards encourage local police departments to adopt and then adapt to their community's needs. The primary focus of some of these standards – or are the proper use of force, including deadly force, and recruiting, hiring, and screening of potential law enforcement officer candidates. If you remember back in October uh, when I did my budget uh, uh, schedule, I told you guys that I wanted to hire a, a company called Lexapol to help us write some of these standards. And we've, we've been working pretty diligently 
with them on um, updating and adopting our, our new policies. Um, and I can tell you that you know we, we've done those policies that, that are uh, the minimum required standards from Governor Kasich's executive order. And uh, we went ahead and, and sent those in uh, to the Ohio Collaborative, and we were given a provisional uh, certification, which I brought here tonight. And I can tell you on April 5th, uh, a representative from the Ohio Collaborative Police Advisory Board came into the Norton Police Department for an on-site review, and I'm proud to announce that we have been awarded certification from the Ohio Collaborative. I can tell you that we've been working uh, with Lexapol on updating all of our policies. We're using federal uh, standards, state standards, and best practices from throughout Ohio. Um, I can tell you that the Norton Police Department, we're going to continue to work on updating our existing policies and procedures um, using the federal, state, and best practices policies that the Ohio Collaborative and the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services are recommending. Um, and we will continue to, to strive to provide the residents of Norton with the best service from their police department. So if you have any questions, I did bring the provisional certification with me. Um, I did not get the, um, the regular certification. Um, that's supposed to be coming to me in the mail. Should be here probably later this week. Um, I will tell you that this is not mandated yet. I believe that they're asking all agencies to do this by 2019. So we're a little ahead of the game, which is good. Um, the next series of, of policies that they want us to work on are um, you know, body camera policies, which we already have, um, policies for our uh, dispatch center, which you know, Swisscom is already their own entity. Um, they're also working on updating their policies to make sure that they are compliant. So um, you know, we're, we're just making sure that we're, we're keeping ahead of the game. And I know that when they, when they do award some of the grants that they're looking to make sure that this, uh, your agency is one of the ones that are compliant. Chief, uh, some of the policies, and you don't have to go into details on it necessarily, but uh, are they looking at some of the incidents that's been going on once they start to investigate them? They always come back and they say, well, we're going to do additional training. Are we putting in some type of annual training for officers to know how to handle certain situations? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Our use of force policy. They want to make sure that you have a policy in place that you just don't have a written policy and you hide it somewhere, that the officers are talking about it, um, and they're tested on it. So I can tell you that every time we go down to the range and we qualify, um, we do that the, the minimum standard is only once a year. I'd like to do that three times a year. But every time we go down to the range and uh, we qualify with our, our uh, duty handguns, rifles, and shotguns, we're also sitting down and going through our use of force policy so that the officers, you know, are aware of it. They know uh, what the policy states, and then they sign off on it, and then they're also given a test that they have to take. Uh, and obviously, it's a pass-fail test. So that's one of the things that this, uh, this, the Ohio Collaborative is looking for, not just that you've got a written policy somewhere that you're hiding it in a bookcase, that you're actually going through it. Um, one of the things that Lexpol is going to do here shortly is, um, is once a week when the officers sign into their MDTs, they'll be given an alert, and they'll have to go to the Lexpol uh, site uh, while they're on duty and just read a couple policies, and then they're going to be given a test a couple of questions that they have to um, answer and acknowledge that they understand it. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> and the other thing I wanted to talk about tonight is we've all we've all heard about <clears throat> the heroin epidemic. I think, epidemic. Mr. Pearson, did you yes, have a question? Go, I can okay. ask you the, don't your train of thought. Keep moving. Okay. okay. At the, end. Um, the Norton Police Department is going to be sponsoring a heroin and drug awareness event on July 22nd, 2017. Uh, from 12 to 5 at the Norton High School Stadium. I brought some flyers with me tonight. I'll make sure that each one of you get it, and, and we'll have some here. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a great event for this community. Uh, my officers are excited. They have been working pretty diligently in getting people to sponsor it and, and to donate their time. So. Now back to your certification. <clears throat> now you're certified going forward. If we have an incident, is the department and the city held to the standard of the certification? 
Absolutely, but I think it would help us, uh, you know, legally that that we have taken the approach of not only do the officers, you know, have a policy, but they have to understand and and you know understand, and they take a test saying that they understand what they're reading. Okay. Now, how does the bargaining unit reflect on this? Should I, they not comply to the standards that are set forth, and you ha they don't pass, or et cetera? I haven't had any issues with the collective bargaining. So they, if a dismissal or disciplinary action were in place, they would go along with the new state standard? Well, they would have to. Okay. At all? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> oh, just real quick. Under my report, so Ms. Whipke, yes. I just want to quickly give an update. Um, Shell Hart and Cleveland Maslin, Mr. Wright, okay. um, we we did go out there the next day. Uh, Mr. White, Mr. White went out to Mr. Wright's house. Um, it was a little messy because right now we're really torn up right in that area. But I do have. Uh, we did photograph everything. And we will be sitting down with ODOT probably, we're hoping still this week, but because of Easter coming up, it may not be till next week. There is, there, we, we don't disagree with his concern um, in the sense by the telephone pole, if you remember his photograph. Um, and I can pass this around. It's not the best picture um, the day it was taken, but you, you will be able to see actually on Shell Hart and Cleveland Maslin, there's actually been an extra catch basin that is being put in to both collect water off of Shell Hart directly from the road and from Cleveland Maslin. Now remember also right now what we're dealing with is all of this is piped and these are yard drains. What we're putting in are actual catch basins, uh, curb and gutter, which is going to make help with the drainage be more efficient. However, we do want ODOT to take a look at his point. Uh, behind the telephone pole area right now, there is going to be a sidewalk and there's a manhole. And we're not quite sure why there just wasn't a catch basin put there potentially as well. So we're having that readdressed. So not quite solved yet, but I do want you to know we're in communication and with ODOT. So I can, anybody want me to pass this photo around? If you, yeah, okay. if you would. I'll show you the old and the new. So um, as, as we progress, I'll, I'll just give you guys some more information. In case you didn't bring your old one. Also, okay. Madam President, if I may, if, for those who are not aware, Greenwich Road is now open. It was opened on Saturday. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Carr, on the yeah. Shell Heart, um, how far to the west are we going to go on that to ensure that lot, most of the ditches are covered over? And we have no idea if they use four inch, six inch, or what the size of the drain. I mean, are the is that ditch is clear enough to provide uh, enough drainage into a new storm drain? Honestly, I don't know that answer, and I'll have to check with Mr. White. I can tell you, Mr. White is working on a separate plan on Shell Hart with Larry Hess, our new service superintendent. We are going to probably remove some of the pipe there that is inadequate and put in some additional. I should say new pipe. We're going to turn out some old pipe, put in some new pipe. Um, for whatever reason, what I think happened over the years is old um, farm tile was used right, as the drainage system. The and so, as you said, it's all different sizes. It's not connected. So we are working on a plan down Shell Heart. I don't know how far it goes down. Um, the one gentleman out there that I'm sure you've met with because he's talked with everyone, I'd rather not say his name right now, but... We are working with him directly on Shell Hart and a couple other homeowners right in that area. So we're hoping that helps as well. Um, but I, I, I would have to get more information from Dave to, to know exactly the size in that. Right, because in the past we've not had a standard. It is reflected and caused problems. We well, do have a standard now. I'm yeah, really well, absolutely. One, we have the moratorium still, so we're trying not to pipe unless there's a, cer there's a special circumstance. And two, now everything has to be approved by the engineer um, when it comes through the street department and service department. However, there are still people right. I think probably get, you know, a, a, a pipe in here and there, but we're really trying to control that much more. Okay. Well, we can update as you go on. The school board is going to discuss this this evening also, right? Oh, okay. I believe. I'm asking confirmation. Yeah, I, I don't know if they are. That's what I was told. Well, hopefully okay. that will okay, go further. Thank you. Is that all?
Uh, one more question, Chief, on the uh, heroin awareness program that you guys are looking to hold there. Uh, has that information been given to the newspapers, and is that just for Norton, or is that for all the surrounding communities? It, it's a Norton community event, but anybody can come in, and and this is the first place I've discussed it. Have not there, There's been no press release on it yet, but I wanted to make you guys aware of it before we did any of that. Okay. Thank you. We did have a meeting last week over it, though, I mean, as far as administration goes, and then we brought it tonight. Thank you. Anything else, Mrs. Carr? That's it. Thank you. Mr. Oh, Green, I think Mar the mayor will be announcing, but Norton Green Up Day, not this weekend, next weekend. If you can come out and volunteer, we'd appreciate it. M Mr. Messner? I have nothing, Madam President. Mr. Markey? Nothing at this time. Thank you. We have no public hearings, so we're moving on with the introduction of new legislation. First thing up is Ordinance 41-2017. Mr. Cronin. Thank you, Madam President. I offer Ordinance 41-2017 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance prohibiting cultivators, processors, and retail dispensaries licensed under Chapter 3796 of the Ohio Revised Code within the City of Norton and declaring an emergency. And that's for first reading only tonight. Thank you. Ordinance 42-2017, Mr. Pearson. Yes, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 42-2017 for its first reading. An ordinance appropriating property interest described as parcels 38WD, 38U, 38TV, and 38TV1, now owned by Albrecht Incorporated and Ohio Corporation, for the purpose of making or repairing roads which are open to the public without charge, authorizing the appropriation of funds for deposit with the clerk of courts, and authorizing the city solicitor and or his designee to file a petition for the appropriation in the Court of Common Pleas, Probate Division of Summit County, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. I'd like to uh, waive the second and third reading because we need to get this moving. A second. Carla, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Pearson? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. And Mr. Pilot? Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to adopt. Second? A second. Carla, call the roll, please. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. And Mr. Pilot? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 43-2017, Mr. Towsley? Thank you, Madam President. I offer resolution 43-2017 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. A resolution confirming the appointment of Joseph A. Conti to an unexpired six-year term as a representative of the City of Norton Civil Service Commission and declaring an emergency. And just for further clarification, and correct me if I'm wrong, this term ends the end of February 2020, I think, because, because it's an unexpired term. Um, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to waive second and third readings. Oh, second. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. And Ms. Whipke? Yes. And now I'd like to make a motion to adopt Resolution 43-2017. Oh, second. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. And Ms. Whipke? Yes. And thanks again to Mr. Conti for stepping up. Now we have the new legislation that we added during the Committee of the Whole. First thing up, Ordinance 44, 2017. Mr. Pearson. Yes, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 44, 2017 for its first reading this evening. Carla, would you mm -hmm. please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing an agreement for property and casualty insurance and declaring an emergency. That's for just first reading, Mr. Not first reading okay. only. Thank you. Excuse me. That's okay. Yeah, don't we have to have this done? 28th. Our suggestion, um, the email I sent out was first reading tonight. We'll call a special meeting next week to have a second reading, and then the 24th can be a third reading and passage, if we want three readings. Or if you want to do two on the 24th, I mean, whatever you want. We just thought that's how we could spread it out. Okay. Yeah. We just have to have it done by the end of the month. Right. So if we vote on it the 24th, that'll give us time to okay. get all the paperwork done. I guess as good as point of any point of question, um, did we receive any other bids on our insurance? 
we use Wickard Insurance, who's the broker, right? And they and they go out and shop all of the oh, policies. No, I'm more than familiar, but did we use any other broker? No, we we have continued to use Wickard. I believe um, on this particular subject, we did have an increase of uh, three point nine percent, if I recall correctly. And that was due to the fact that we have a, a new officer, and then we have a, a new dog who's also considered an officer and the backhoe and the new vehicles, two new vehicles. So that was um, why the increase, just for anybody that knows, yeah, 3.96% increase actually. And it went from $86,177 to 89596 Now I guess my question would be is, <coughs> Anybody have a problem with waiving the third reading and passing it without having the special next week? Or do you want to have a special to have the second reading? I'm, I, fi I'm fine with waiving the third. Yeah, I don't have no problem. I just want to know, did we change any of the deductions or do, do, everything's pretty much the same? Okay. And we I'm used no the same, they were using the same carrier again or a different carrier? Um, I don't know, Ron. Do you yeah, the, the same change? carriers were in place as we had last year. If you remember, the one carrier did change. On the, um, it, it's going to change next I mean, year. Brokers can Scott, switch. Scottsdale, and that our, our police coverage through Scottsdale is changing. They've they're owned by they Nationwide. They got bought out. They're being bought out, so that will change for next year. I'd rather do a special next week. Well, and and I don't ha I don't necessarily have a problem with doing a special. I mean, it's you, you know you call the meeting, you read the legislation, and you move on to committee of the whole. Yeah, we just give a week you for know. a comment. Yeah, and, then and if we'll we do finish. that, and if we do that, I would suggest that we uh, also in a special have a second reading on uh, ordinance forty one and move it along. That'd be fair enough. <laughs> Okay. So there's no objection. If, if that, do we want to throw that on the work session for next week just for discussion in case anybody has any questions on it? On, on uh, the insurance, or the the insurance piece. Water. Well, you could throw both out there. I mean, I, I think anybody can come up and make any comments during Committee of the Whole if they want to, but, you know, during co public comments. So I don't so I would, yeah, I would just say if we're going to do a special, let's put them both on, have second readings on both of them, and then we can vote on them, at the, you know, at the next council meeting and be done with it. So that was just fine, my point. Catch that, Carla? Yep, sure did. Thank you. Thank you. Next item up is Ordinance 45. I offer Ordinance 45 2017 for its first reading. Mm -hmm. Ask clerk to read it, please. An ordinance to amend the appropriations for the current expenses of the City of Norton for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2017, and declaring an emergency. Okay. This is um, to put the budget money back <clears throat> so that we can go start forward to be able to acquire the ACME property. We're short on that money. Again, this we will be reimbursed 90% of that once it's uh, over and done with. And... We need to get this going, so I'm going to be asking to waive the second and third readings. I'll second. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. And Mr. Towsley? <clears throat> yes. Okay. I motion to adopt Ordinance 45 2017. I'll second. Roll call. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. And Mr. Towsley? Yes. We have no prior legislation going on to unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business come before council? Mr. Markey, have we settled with any of the other people under the eminent domain, or is it still in motion? No, there's only one more that um, really is, I think, in limbo for settlement, and we're still working with them. I, I think that's probably going to settle this week. Yeah. We're just I waiting for some paperwork back. Right. We have an agreement in principle. It's just getting the final paperwork. So. Okay. I asked this question, this is uh, for you, Mrs. Carr. I asked this question last week if there was a further expansion of the sewer lines from Clubside to Shellheart. You said no. A uh, resident called in, was called me Saturday, and spoke to somebody at City Hall. He did not get a name. I wish he had it, but he was told they were expanding it. 
I'll be happy to provide the map again. Right. Okay. I mean, I have the map, the original okay. plans. I mean, but can you give is... me some more information on how we were expanding it, or no? He wanted to know if it was going to come past his pro or his mother's property because he moved back in with her, and she was concerned. And his property is on Clubside. No, no, his property is on Easton between Shellhart and Clubside. And I don't know who he talked to down here. I, that's why I asked him. I said, I really wish when you call City Hall, you ask who you're speaking with. I will tell you, at least my staff knows if it's a sewer call, it should only go to Dave or me. Okay. Well, I will assure him this. I did not line. speak to anyone regarding Easton in the recent. There was one gentleman that called, um, but that wasn't last week. There was a gentleman on Easton that called to verify his address, if it was in or out. And I believe it was out. It was not part of the project. Uh, so I he was on the other side of the highway, so I know it was out. Okay. No, this person's. But that's the only call I've gotten south regarding of, uh, Easton. Shillard. Okay. Well, that's. I will reassure him again. Okay. If he wants to call me, he's more than welcome. No, I mean I know who he called. That's what I told him he should have called. Okay. Him, but he didn't get a name, so that's that doesn't help much. Okay. Any other unfinished business? New business. Does there any new business come before council? Yeah, I have an item which I got a deluge of calls on. Everybody familiar with the Barbin and Herald? Last week, uh, Nor six Norton firefighters go to Venezuela for tremine training. I guess my question would be, was that volunteer or did the city pick up any tab for a trip to Venezuela for six people? Well, we did not pick up a tab for I mean, Venezuela. I've been hard pressed to think we. And did. honestly, I missed that article. I would have to look at it. Well, I can give it to you. It's right there. I hadn't seen it either, but it was somebody brought it to me. Are they full-time firefighters? Full Norton firefighters. Six good of Venezuela. You can keep that. Well, I can tell you, no, we did not pay for that. Okay, they in essence did go though. I have no idea, so I will have to check into that. Oh, I guess the next it says voluntary trip. Right, but I guess the next question would be if they did it on vacation time, fine, but I hope it didn't occur over time to the department because we were short six people. Well, I'll be happy to check into that. Yeah, but you I, can I, keep it. Okay, I don't think, I don't think that's I, the case. I mean, I got a bunch of call people complaining about streets and saying, I can't believe I can't get my street fixed. I said, well, let's look into it before we holler. Sure, I'll be happy to look into it. I'm pretty confident that, that that there was nothing well, I would be too cause I don't <laughs> think we spent six thousand plus dollars on plane tickets but stranger things have happened okay anything, that's all I have anything else under new business <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> public service announcements are there any public service announcements mr. mayor yes yes I do thank you <clears throat> First of all, I have uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, that would be uh, April 12th, from 6 to 7 o'clock, we have the uh, Norton Parks Board presents an introduction to yoga and meditation. Um, again, it's uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. this coming Wednesday. Information's on the website if you're interested. Also, for Central Collection um, Agency Taxpayers Assistance for City Income Tax Filing, which is also on the website. You have one more night. It is Thursday, April 13th from 1 to 7 p.m. If And the staff from CCA will be available at the Norton Community Center to assist residents with filing their 2016 city income tax. Uh, the Green Up Norton Community Work Day, Saturday, April 22nd. Again, it's from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, anybody that uh, pre-registers receives a free water bottle. Um, we do have information on the website for that as well. We're asking that uh, if you're free that day, come out and uh, help us pick up trash. And uh, the Norton Kiwanis Prayer Breakfast, um, it's May 4th, 2017, Grace Church at 7 a.m. Tickets are $10. And... Um, I think we'll have, uh, well, tickets can be purchased uh, through Maggie, and I think there's several members that uh, throughout the community that will have tickets available as, as well. And uh, last but not least, we've got the Celtic Beltane Festival. That'll be on May 13th at Columbia Woods Park from 1030 to 6 p.m. And uh, basically it is admission eight years and over. 
eight years and over 90 free, eight years and above, $7, family group of four, $20. Proceeds help fund the Pegasus Farm Therapeutic Writing Center. It's a 501c3, so it is a paid event, but it will be held at the Columbia Woods Park from 1030 to 6 p.m. on May 13th. That is all I have. Are there any public updates? Council's next regular meeting will be April 24th at 7 p.m. and the work session is scheduled for next Monday, April 17th, 7 p.m. And sounds like we're going to have a special probably before that. Before um, or after? Before, you guys before. Before in lieu of. I mean, it's. I'm always a fan of if you're going to have a special, you might as well just do your committee work during your special council meeting and not have to adjourn and open up a new meeting. It's But whatever you guys want to do is fine with me. Thank you. That being stated, and there's no further business to come before council, this meeting is adjourned at <clears throat> 